Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for June the 29th. I'm Jonathan Kinsler. Today's scripture reading is found in 2 Chronicles chapter 17 and 18 and Acts chapter 17 verses 1 through 19. The title of my devotional is Like Jesus. And we're looking at Acts 7 verse 9 which says, The patriarchs became jealous of Joseph and sold him into Egypt. Yet God was with him. Now, Stephen's speech is the longest in in Acts. And here we see that Stephen tells the Sanhedrin and the elders of of the Jews the well-known story of Abraham and, and the patriarchs. And in his defense before the hostile audience, a question should be asked, why does he highlight Joseph and his rejection by his brothers? And that's what we're dealing with here in this passage. Rather than defending himself against the charges brought against him, Stephen's whole purpose is to get them to repent and believe in Christ. However, the Sanhedrin had even ordered the apostles not to speak or preach about Jesus, not just once, but on more than one occasion. We see that in Acts 4.18 and 5.28. In particular, Stephen draws attention to how Israel had been known to reject God's chosen deliverer. So what Stephen does is to to recount a story they were familiar with and respected as God's word. And through what he shows that the story of Joseph and the patriarchs looks forward to Jesus, his salvation, and even their own Jewish rejection. First of all, the jealous brothers sell Joseph into slavery. And we see that in our verse in 7 verse 9. The innocent one rejected by man is the one God has chosen. But we see here that God was with him, in verse, also here. And it's repeated in relation to Jesus in Acts 10.38 in order to sum up God's power at work in him, that is in Jesus, and his being anointed with the Spirit and power. So the story of Joseph points to the story of Jesus. And then we see that God delivered him. God delivered Joseph from all his afflictions in Acts 7.10. And this aligns also with God's raising Jesus from the dead, where we see that God loosed him from the great pains of death in Acts 2.24. Joseph is given favor and wisdom from God, Acts 7.10. Joseph notes, or sorry, Stephen notes. And Jesus is twice described with these same terms of favor and wisdom if we look at Luke 2.40 and 52. Joseph's appointment as governor over Egypt in Acts 7.10, also parallels Jesus' appointment as Lord and Christ that we see, for example, in Acts 2.36. You see, Joseph was raised up over all Egypt. In Acts 2.36, it says that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. As well, even at the end of this story in 55 verse 56, Stephen declares his vision Um, of Jesus' role as the exalted Son of Man at the right hand of God. And that is over all people, over Israel and all the nations. The implication that the patriarchs only find deliverance through Joseph, that we see for sure in Acts 7, 10 to 13, there was no other deliverer, no other savior for them. It corresponds with the exclusiveness of salvation found in Christ alone. And this is proclaimed back in Acts 4.12 to these very same uh, attackers uh, of the Sanhedrin. There is salvation in no one else. Joseph's brothers were given a second chance with him. And it was only on their second visit that his identity was revealed to them. It's really interesting. This aligns with the failure by many Jews to recognize who Jesus was either before or after his death and resurrection. And now through Stephen's spirit-empowered preaching and ministry of Jesus and the other further ministry of Jesus' followers, Jesus' true nature has been revealed and this audience has been given a second chance as well. The mention that Joseph's family was disclosed to Pharaoh, as we see in Acts 7.13, may further correspond with Jesus revealing the Father to whomever he wills. And we see that in Luke 10, 22. Now, all of these parallels, we, we can see them now that in its entirety, Stephen is preaching Jesus to them, but through their own scriptures and all the while never mentioning the name of Jesus. 
In fact, as soon as he refers to to Jesus, now he refers to him, but not by name. He calls him the righteous one in Acts 752. Um, they cannot contain their murderous intentions any longer. And we see that in Acts 754. And so even there in Acts 752, Jesus is not mentioned by name. Later on, Stephen will see in 755, Stephen will see Jesus at the right hand of God, but he declares to them that he sees the Son of Man even at the right hand of, of the glory of God. So it's really interesting and what wisdom was given to Stephen. And it notes that about Stephen back in Acts chapter 6. Um, that he preaches Jesus without ever mentioning the name of Jesus. So just as the patriarchs rejected Joseph and then Moses, this present generation was rejecting Jesus. And whether they reject us is of little concern, but do they reject Jesus? So we see Stephen using stories that they themselves even claimed to hold as inspired by God. Why? In order to get them to rethink their stubborn rejection of the Savior, Jesus. Are you more interested in defending yourself or in proclaiming Christ? And that's one of the things that Joseph shows us and demonstrates. He's not worried about himself. He's worried about them and their need for Jesus. Are we more worried about ourselves or others? How do you preach Christ to people who do not want to hear his name? And that's happening definitely in our generation and in our places and in our time. Do we have the wisdom of the Spirit to proclaim Jesus even if we don't use his name? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus and there is no salvation in no one else. But oh, what great salvation is found in him that all would receive him. We know that this is your will. So Lord, let us proclaim him to everyone and give everyone the opportunity. And Lord, we know you take such good care of us. So let us not be so concerned about ourselves, but let us be concerned about others. And Lord, boldly even proclaim with wisdom, even as Stephen did, let us proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to everyone. Let us have that boldness. Let us have that wisdom. And Lord, do your work, we pray in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen.